Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. Today I have a second half of that tutorial for you so you can continue knitting through the four corners baby blanket. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. Yes, that four corners baby blanket is going strong, I hope. Maybe you've knitted through two colours and you are ready and waiting to start the second half of your blanket. This involves knitting through two more colours and it involves decreasing. So we're going to decrease and finish off at the last point. This is what you're going to end up with. There you go. So here I started with the orange, knitted all the way through the grey and then this is where I started decreasing with the yellow and finished off with the grey again. So you may be actually using this colourway. With the knitting kit you have the choice of following my colourways or going completely rogue and choosing your own colours. So we're going to finish this blanket today in the tutorial. Let's get to it. Here we are then. I've completed lots of increases on the third stitch of every row and I now have 136 stitches on my needles. It is a bit squashed on the circular but just imagine if it was on a straight needle, um, we'd be a lot more squashed with all the stitches. So I do feel that this circular was a good choice. So that's 136 stitches. We do have some grey left over, but we've got to a point where I'm happy to now continue with the next colour. And what we're going to do here, we have one colour, two colours, and then we're going to decrease down to the final corner with two more colours. So I'm going to pick chalk yellow for my next one. And I'm all ready to go with this. So we start, if you're just picking this up and you've had it sitting there for a couple of days, make sure you're knitting from the end where the jog ray is finishing. Then you're... Um, increasing will move into your decreasing evenly so your second color is finishing at this point and this is where you lead in the third color there we go so I've got about six inches sat there waiting and what we're going to do is a really nice easy decrease we're going to do knit one knit two and then knit two together then I'm going to knit all the way along this row without decreasing again and we don't really have to worry about this corner it's a gentle decrease by just decreasing every other row on this side of the row it's a gentle decrease so that it's not a big point. We haven't got to do anything fancy there. With this, it is a reversible blanket. We're not doing anything particularly different on one side to the other, so it looks like a right side and a wrong side, but there is a right side and a wrong side nonetheless. Because of changing colour, we're going to have just a slightly um, noticeable row when we shift from one colour to the next. And I'll show you that with the orange changing to the grey. So that is the wrong side there. But we have the right side facing us as we change colour. You can also, if you're really careful, you can tell that it's the right side of the casting on because of the look of it. It's just smooth transition. And also if you use the casting on method that I suggest in the pattern, um, the cable cast on method that I used in the tutorial as well. The end of yarn that we started to cast on with is here on the left hand side of the corner rather than the right. So we know that the right side is facing when we've got those few things just giving us those clues. Okay, I'm going to keep going all the way through this.
Okay, now we're meeting the point where I change the yarn colour. So I'm going to do that last stitch very carefully. And what I will do here is just tie those two together with a single knot, there you go. And I will cut the grey thread there. Now then, here I will just show you the knit two together more closely. So with knit two, knit KF, KFB, we are doing um, knit into one stitch to make two stitches. With, um, with knit two together, we are making one stitch out of two. So I'm going to knit the first two stitches in the row. That's the border. And then the next two stitches will be made into one. But basically, if you're knitting one stitch, you know that the needle goes into the front of that loop. If you're knitting two together, the needle goes into the front of two stitches at the same time. It's exactly the same process. The stitches, the backs, backs of the loops are still there on the needle. You just go into the front of them both at the same time. Then the yarn goes around, you pull the loop through and that is your knit two together. You just drop those two stitches off of the needle at once. It's a really neat way to decrease and you really do not notice it. So, and then you can carry on knitting. So that is your knit two together. If you want to see it in even finer detail, then do go and watch the knit two together tutorial. Um, there you go. So that is knit two together. Um, and that's how we continue with these rows. It is knit two, knit two together, knit to the end of the row. Knit two, knit two together, knit to the end of the row. All the way through all of these decreases. And again, we're gonna do this until we reach 96 stitches so that we're at the same point as we were when we moved from orange to gray. And then we will move into our last color once we finish decreasing through the yellow. Okay, we're now about to start the fourth color. And one way to double check that you've done everything well is to count the number of rows that you've knitted. One of the problems might be as you're knitting is that you either forget to decrease or at the beginning you forget to increase on, on a row. With this kind of pattern, it doesn't happen as much because you're you're using the shaping techniques right at the beginning of the row, not on every other row or every third row or something like that. That's when you're more likely to forget. So the fact that it's on every row means that it's more likely you'll remember to do it. So what we're gonna do, what I do with this kind of pattern is just count the number of rows so that I make sure I'm using, so to make sure I've done the right number. So I've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I've done 40 rows here of increasing. And now I'll just count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's 40 rows of decreasing. So from 96 up to 36, 136 and now 136 down to 96, that's another 40 rows. So I've managed to do that without making a mistake. What I'm now going to do is change color again, and I'm gonna bring in the darker gray this time. And this one will be the last color, because what we're going to do now is decrease to a point. So we have a point looking like this. And I'll come back when I've got a few rows to go and we'll go through those rows together. Okay. Just as before, I'm going to start the colour right at the end here. There we are, just maybe eight inches, ten inches at the end. And I'll just start knitting. So one, two and knit two together. So at the beginning of all these rows, we're decreasing still. Knit one, knit two, decrease. And then all the way along. And yes, this is the last color. 
using four colours on this blanket and then decreasing all the way through to nothing. Okay, so I actually knitted about 10 stitches and come to a point where I said this colour isn't quite right. This grey, although it is a nice dark grey, it has got a very slight green tinge to it, which doesn't work with the orange and the yellow that I've got here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a lighter grey again. This is Jog Grey, so I'm going to use Jog Grey instead of the eagle grey on this blanket. Here we go. So we're using light grey twice on this blanket and that's going to look really nice. I do have another colour way where I'm going to use the darker grey and that is when it is greens. So here we go. I'm just going to get going with this grey now. One, two, and remember as you're starting the new colour to do the knit two together. Do the shaping as you start new colour. There you go. Okay, so you're allowed to do that kind of thing. Just make those choices, make those decisions. Um, and it's a gut instinct sometimes with these colour choices. I'll set up the colours for you so you can get the colourways that I've chosen or of course you can go straight ahead and choose colours for yourself. There you go. And obviously this can be knitted in two colours so you go all the way from 4 to 136 and then all the way down to 4 again and you've got a blanket of two half colours. You can do all in one colour if you like so all the only stipulation is that you need four balls of yarn. Just under 400 grams you'll need for this. And you can see already that I do have leftovers. What I'm going to do is start the new ball of yarn because this leftover, it will take me so far, but then I'll have another edge to, I'll have another pair of ends to, um, to sew in if I start with this and then continue with that. So for... This kind of knit, that's what I would recommend. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with this and I'll see you when I'm down to the last few stitches and we're knitting up to the corner. Okay, we are getting close here. I've got seven stitches on the needle. 
I think. Eight stitches. And now I've got seven. And this row will give me six. And this row will give me five, four, three, two, one. So, right, we're right at the end here. So what we need to just double check is that I've got five stitches, just done a backward row, about to do this one here. So we've just done a right side row. This is the left side row now the wrong side row, beg your pardon. So we now have four. So what was I showing you before? We have the right side row facing us when this is um, changing colour without us seeing it changing like that. So that's the right side row and that's the right side row. So I have the right side facing me as I'm about to do this. And I've got four stitches on my needle there should always be an even number of stitches on your needle when you're doing a right side row. And for this one, I'm going to cast off. I'm not going to do another decrease. I'm going to knit two and then cast off. So casting off, you knit two stitches and you pass this first one over the second one. And then I knit another one, pass the first one over the second one. Knit one more, pass the first one over the second one and that is it that's the end of our knitting what I'm going to do here is actually pull this open and then bring these last clump of yarn through as well so there you go that is now finished and that is our last end that's our last corner There you are. So that's the corner there. We can see that really nice right angle, just like this one here. And it matches up with these two down here. So this is where we cast on. And that's the other diagonal corner there. There you go. So that is our corner to corner blanket. And all I need to do now is sew in the ends of yarn. So sewing in the ends of yarn can feel like a marathon because you've just done all of that. And you think, oh, I finished. No, you haven't. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is just show you how I do this with cotton yarn. It's not much different to how I would do it with any other yarn. But I will just um, get a large needle out of here. There we go. That will do and my scissors and we can start here now we've knotted this on the end here what you can do and I would only do this with wool yarn, is undo that knot and then wind in. With cotton yarn, you don't have the fibre, the fibrous um, threads holding the yarn together. Um, and that would just basically bind um, the two yarns together quite easily. So you just need to be a bit more secure with cotton yarn. So what I'm going to do is keep that knot there. It doesn't show, you can't feel it, it's not tight. So I'm just going to start winding the yarn into the knitted fabric and I'm going to go into the knitted fabric here in between the stitches diagonally. What I'm going to do is go diagonally down the side where we've done all of the increasing. So that's a couple of inches there and then I'm going to go diagonally up so that's slightly easier because you can see the stitches there a bit more easily there and 
there and then I'm going to go diagonally down again like that so what I've done I've got the wrong side facing me there you go you can see the color change there and you don't actually see that I've gone in between the stitches there and you can go until you finish the length of yarn if you want you can just keep going diagonally zigzagging one way and then the other or you can get to a point and you'll say that's enough I'm going to stop here and I will cut the yarn off and you know while this is being used you can um, say oh no that yarn's come undone and I'll cut it off here and it won't matter because there's still so much of it being held in place so over time that may just get shortened but it won't matter so make sure you've got a good long length going into the knitted fabric and I'm just going to sit here and do all these other lengths now all the other ends of yarn need to be wound in and I mean, this can get sat and it can be um, just annoying. Oh, I haven't done that yet. Oh, I haven't done that yet. It's annoying last piece of the knit because um, you've got to get your needle out. You've got to get your scissors out. And it's just one more picky thing to do when you've actually really enjoyed knitting, not had much concentration. It's just really nice and relaxing. And this you've actually got to focus on and um, really watch what you're doing where your stitches um, where you're moving your needle um, but I am going to time this for you see how long it takes me to just do these um, few ends of yarn what we have got here is eight balls of yarn and we've got two ends for each four balls of yarn sorry and two ends for each of those so we're only doing eight ends of yarn we're winding in just moving them in through weaving them in through the fabric as I go here just a bit of zigzagging so I'm going to time this for you and I'll let you know when I've finished how long it takes What I will just show you here is there's an end of the row there that just feels a bit bigger, feels a bit clumpy. But where I'm changing yarn, I've knotted it and that just feels a bit clumpy as well. And it's an interesting word, clumpy, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> but it feels just that little bit extra. It's not nothing really hard or furious, it's just an end of row. And I don't really don't think it matters at all. So we've got that little knot in there and like I said it will just hold it together a little bit better because it's cotton yarn.
there we go that took probably 15 minutes um to do all of those ends and it does show you it's a lot less time than you might think it takes forever but it's only eight ends and it's one two three four five six seven eight so it's not such a big deal as you might think okay so that is the blanket finished there you go you finished isn't that great now what i do have also for you is something special now if you got the pattern or the kit you will know this already and if you saw a video a couple of weeks ago showing you the full kits you will know that the kit also comes with the stripy hat so there's enough yarn left over from the baby hat from the baby blanket to knit up a newborn to three month size baby hat so if you got the kit or the blanket then use your leftovers and finish off knitting this we will be knitting up a hat together in a few weeks time here on youtube and we'll be using the same yarn again the shiny happy cotton which i absolutely love and is perfect for this size of knitting needle as well five and a half millimeters it's not so fine that it takes a lot of stitches and a long time to knit i can knit up this kind of hat in an evening um, i'm sure many of you can as well and it's ideal for a last minute present when you think oh no the baby's almost arrived i've got to get this done so we can knit that together in a few weeks. So I do hope you've enjoyed knitting through this blanket with me. The knit along has been going strong. We've got one more knit and that is to go. I love this kind of knit. It feels like an easy knit because we're doing knit stitches all the way through it, but it's got that little bit of interest to it as well. Oh, there's the next stripe and ah, oh, I've got fewer and fewer stitches as I'm moving up towards the top. I'm almost finished. That's what I love about increasing and decreasing. It's like just got that motivation to keep going. See, oh, how many stitches have I got now? How many stitches have I got now with every stripe? And next week, we're diving into the details of the other baby blanket patterns. We're looking at some of the cable details that are used in the rollover baby blanket. So do come back and have a look at that. We use these cable techniques across so many different knitting patterns as well, but they're in that rollover baby blanket too. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Happy knitting.